Okay, so suppose we know that the stationary probability exists uh, for a Markov chain, uh, we would very much like to know uh, what it is. And the reason is because uh, for certain Markov chains, or, uh, of, uh, certainly the ones that have to do with computer systems modeling, uh, certain states have special significance. So let's take an example like this. Let's say that I have a, a buffer into which uh, packets are arriving and I draw the buffer sort of sideways like this and packets are arri arriving like this. And we can think of the state of the Markov chain as being the number of packets in the buffer. So let's say the buffer has size over here K, capital K, and then when there's one packet in it, we'll call it uh, the state of Markov chain is in state one, when the second packet arrives, it's in state two, etc. And now we can see that uh, the kth state corresponds to the buffer being full. And so if any arrivals happen when you're in state k, then we are going to have a packet loss because there's no more space in the buffer. So the probability of being in this particular state is quite important. And, and so in, in a system model, computing these state residence probabilities, as they're called, is quite important. So going back to our uh, probability distribution, what we'd like to know, of course, is that uh, what is pi star for state k? And so we, we call that pi star k. That's the, that's the notation. So the subscript, uh, this subscript over here denotes the probability of of the uh, of being in in state state k uh, in the stationary distribution, and why the stationary distribution? Because that's the expected value of the Markov chain into the future. Once it's been running for a while, then uh, all other things being equal, we expect the Markov chain to be in this particular state with this probability pi star k. Okay, so uh, I'm going to sort of state without proof over here uh, uh, another fundamental theorem, and it uh, it basically talks about the conditions under which we can quite easily compute the uh, stationary probability of an ergodic Markov chain. So first we need to know the conditions. So the conditions are that we need to have a, a homogeneous Markov chain so that's just for starters and if it's not homogeneous if it's not Markov then we're out of luck then we need to make it needs to be irreducible so which means we can go from any state to any other state so it needs to be irredu irreducible and it needs to be aperiodic. So we don't have any periods, which basically means there's at least one self loop somewhere a non with a non zero probability. And if these conditions hold, so this is the first condition, the second condition, if these three conditions hold, then this value pi star can be found as the limiting probability distribution limit n tends to infinity pi n. And it's basically saying this is the station the stationary probability distribution pi star is what you get as you run the chain for a very long time, so n tends to infinity. And it's saying that uh, this uh, exists. Under these condition, this limiting distribution exists, and it's independent of pi zero. So that's sort of the uh, memory lessness that I alluded to earlier. Uh, and so this is, of course, uh, means that it's, uh, that, but this need not be ergodic. Uh, this need not be ergodic because this could be recurrent, recurrent now. If, in addition, it's also recurrent non-null, So that's the additional condition of recurrent non-null. Then that means that all states are ergodic.
then we have an even nicer con condition. Then we can say that uh, these conditions hold sum over j pi star j equals 1. Now, this is, of course, going to be true trivially because this means that the probability of being in one of the states, j, is going to be 1. That's going to be true anyway. But moreover, we're given this particular equation, which is pi j star is given by sum over i pi i star p i j. In other words, the the probabilities of st uh, we basically are going to continue to be in the probability uh, uh, continue to be in the distribution pi j star uh, pi star uh, after applying the transition probability matrix p i j onto the to, into pi i because what you see on the right hand side is nothing more than the row vector pi i multiplied by the transition probability matrix. Uh, Pij. So if you, if, you, if you write it out over here, you'll find that this exactly is going to be the case. So if you take the row vector P pi star, and over here you put the transition matrix A, then we'll get that pi star equals pi star times A. So solving this becomes uh, quite straightforward using any kind of uh, techniques such as Gaussian el elimination, and then we can use this to compute the stationary probabilities of a uh, of an ergodic Markov chain. Computing the uh, stationary probability is quite uh, easy when we have a finite chain, because if it's a finite chain, then all we need to do is to test for a periodicity, which means a self loop. Uh, so a self loop and irreducibility, which means that we can go from every state to every other state. If these three conditions hold for a finite chain, then it's ergodic. And you can, these are all can be looked, you can make out whether it's true or not just by looking at the transition probability matrix or the uh, state representation diagram, the state diagram. And when you have this, then you can immediately compute the stationary probability distribution uh, using uh, this relationship over here.